Well, hello there, friends. Welcome to this month's edition of the Expat Wise Chat. Now, I'm here with a dear friend, Frank Tortoriello of beautiful, sunny, gorgeous Costa Rica. And you know that every expat has their own unique story, and wait till you hear Frank's. Let's get going. Hey, Frank. Hey, how are you doing, Trish? How are you? I'm good. Good. Okay. I've got to start out with the first natural question. How did you end up in Costa Rica? Like, what were you doing in the States and what made you take that leap? Well, I owned a restaurant for many years in, in Massachusetts. And one of my early customers had moved to Costa Rica and for years kept inviting me to come visit. Finally, I got the gumption to take a vacation and came down and immediately fell in love with Costa Rica. To be honest with you, I love being warm. Massachusetts is warm. And so that was the first motivation was to come here at some point in time. I came for a few visits, and each one meant that at some point in my life, I was going to come live here. And then certain things happened back in the States with my business that prompted me to make the move sooner than I anticipated. Yeah. So what's Costa Rica like? Where are you? What area are you in? And what's it like to live there? In my humble opinion, I'm in the most beautiful part of Costa Rica. It's in the southern Pacific zone. It's where the mountains meet the ocean. It's green all year round. I just love it. I love the heat. I, you know, a lot of people don't like it, but I love the heat. I escaped Massachusetts for this reason. And this reason is my primary reason for being here is the heat. <laughs> it seems weird. But I had this fantasy through as far back in my life as I can remember to live somewhere tropical, have the kind of job I have. And for me to realize a, that dream is amazing because not many people can ever accomplish that. Right. And I stumbled into this situation where now I, my dream is a reality to me. And that is amazing to me. <laughs> so you're semi-retired. You're, you're working. What are you doing? Well, I just have one of the most amazing jobs is to, to be a property manager for an enormous piece of property sitting on the ocean. And that, you know, there's work to be had, but it's not hard, you know, in comparison to what, in my, my estimation of my perspective of what I used to do for a living 24-7 in a restaurant, this is easy work. And that has made me, I guess, semi-retired, you know, and I have the ability to make my own hours and still be in a comfortable, beautiful, you know, position, you know, and so I'm lucky. I'm extremely lucky. This is not something anybody falls into. I just got lucky, that's all. Now, how long have you been there? In Costa Rica? Yeah. 13 years. Amazing. And I've been at this job now 10 years. Wow. So it's home. Costa Rica is home oh, this for you. Oh, is so home that I don't even refer to the United States as home. That's yeah. the past. Nice. This is my home for now and hopefully for the future, but I don't intend to go north ever again. <laughs> to the cold. <laughs> now, if no, I have to go north. south, I'll be heading your way to Ecuador next if that's what the words say that I have to go, you know, but Sounds it's going to stay warm. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Now, in, in terms of your lifestyle there, I know that there's, there's actually a turtle refuge or a turtle reserve there right. on the property. Do you also get involved in that? Can you yeah, that's, us part, about it? that's part of my job. I ha we started uh, about seven years ago, I believe, seven, eight years ago. The, per the guy I work for put up money and backing to create a biological reserve on the property. Because this property is one of the most diverse properties in the area, and it's the beginning of one of the largest 
um, mangroves in Central America. And so we are right at the beginning of this. So it's a very critical area. And he decided that he wanted to protect this area. And we started turtle rescue programs. We've done studies on mammals and water studies. So we, so I oversee this. I don't, wow. I can't say I have all the knowledge. I'm not a biologist. I, yeah. I yeah. sample just for a living. So good luck with that. <laughs> And so, so my part of my job is to oversee this and, and make sure everything stays stable. But I, we have such a good staff that it makes the job pretty easy. Nice. What kind of turtles? This is Olive Ridley is our primary turtles that nest here. And it's called Playa Tortuga for a reason because it's Turtle Beach. So, but... A lot of the environmental stuff that's happened throughout the world, in, and generally this area, we've ha seen less and less turtle migration here, and we're not sure what the reason is, if they've been killed or they haven't been able to survive for other reasons, you know. Mm -hmm. But, so it's pretty critical that the work we do here to save what we can save for the turtle population, at least in our area, is very important. That's amazing. It's wonderful. Yeah, I think it's a, one of the most positive of things it. that, you know, as as a, um, a foreigner to come here to have such a positive impact, this is a pretty positive impact on what we do here. You know, so. Fabulous. Now tell me about the fauna and the flora there. The, the, you've, the animals that you get to well, be surrounded by, what's that like? Well, it's an interesting perspective because since I've been here, the, um, the increase in, in amount of animals that have returned to this area, because this area, and a lot of Costa Rica was devastated because in the 70s they decided to cut down a lot of the forest because they thought their economics would go towards cattle. Well, that became a mistake. And so now it's been years to regrow those forests and bring the animals back because they all went south. And so what we're seeing here, and because of our biological reserve, we're noticing how the increase in animal population is coming back to the area, nice. which brings it back to more of a natural state. And so we're seeing a return of so many macaws that haven't been here for 40 years. Wow. We're seeing um, jaguamundis, ocelots. Jaguars haven't returned to the area yet, but many other things. And we do otter studies and caiman studies. So this is all um, a change in, in what the environment can now sustain. And it seems to have increased in its ability to sustain. So it's almost like you can trust that nature will re regenerate itself if you allow it to. And this is one of the things we've noticed. So. That is so exciting that you get to be part of it all. That's wonderful. Really, especially when I had no knowledge of half of this 10 years ago. I had no clue. <laughs> so that's it. So it's just been this incredible learning experience and you're yeah, right in the middle of it. Wow. It's been an education for me, you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, I find it interesting and I'm learning a lot. And I like the fact that we, and I myself, can have a positive impact on, on the environment here. So. Excellent. Now, can you tell me about the adjustments and kind of the challenges of living in Costa Rica? Are there any that <laughs> Oh, there, there's a lot. There's a lot, you know, because to be honest, we come from a you know, culture in the United States of convenience, fast pace, um, just never in doubt about what we can get. And so here you come and things are not that convenient. There's a different pace of life. And so one of the things I say that Patience in Costa Rica is not a virtue, it's a way of life. And so it's an incredible adjustment. And it, I'm still going through it after all these years because I, for I, what, 50 plus years living in a fast pace 
everything, you know, you pick up a phone book, you can find 10 plumbers, 10 electricians in your area, no matter what your area is. Yeah. Here, you're subject to maybe one, two that you trust. Yeah. And their time is so occupied that you have to wait. And there's a lot of waiting. And so that is a little frustrating when you're trying to get things done. Yeah. But it's also been a great lesson in learning how to be patient. And that is important. And that's a lesson that it took me a long time to learn, and I'm still learning. <laughs> I get that. Absolutely. Now, all right, I have to ask. Okay. As a single man in Costa Rica, what's it been like? Lonely. <laughs> I to be honest with you. Really? Look, I, I, you would know, my morals are very interesting. And it doesn't fit the morals of most people. But one of the things, I'm an older per, uh, man. Mm -hmm. I'm not attracted to young women. Mm -hmm. And a lot of um, people that come, guys that come down here, older guys, they have this thing about these young uh, Costa Rican women will attach themselves to them and they think, oh my God, this woman loves me. Mm -hmm. And no disparaging of the Costa Rican women, mm -hmm. but... The reality is they're not looking at the person anything more than a ticket, either money or a ticket out of, out of Costa Rica to a better existence, you know. And it's like, I have to say this, but it's like guys that go to a strip club and they hand the girl a $5 bill and she smiles at him and they think, oh my God, she loves me. No, she just wants the other $5 bill. And that's kind of what it is, you know, and so... I, I, I'm just, just not my cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah. And so the pool is limited, you yeah. know, there, and culturally there's a difference between Costa Rican women and American women. Yeah. And I'm more prone to American women or foreign women because of their attitudes, you know, yeah. and it's just the way it is, but the pool is very small. Yeah. There's a, and which is interesting because I found there's an incredible amount of dynamic, strong, older uh, women that have come here that are independent, which is attractive, but they also have either come from relationships that were so negative that they are hesitant to ever get involved with anybody. Yeah. So there's barriers, you know, and yeah. so. So it's not always easy. Not at all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I get that. I do. And I, I don't, I don't drink, so I don't go to bars. Mm -hmm. So the social scene is relatively small, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so I take the responsibility. I don't put myself out there, so I'm not laying it all on anybody else. That's mm -hmm. a lot of me, you know. And so I make those decisions. I live by those consequences. You know, so. And in terms of your friendships as well, making friends. As well, you have I mean, you've developed your friends. small. That's not a problem. I have a lot of friends. Yeah. Now, quality of friends—that's a, a big question. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, I hate to say this, but are transients. They come through here, stay for a while. No, 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 nothing personal. No, I get it because and then they leave. Yeah. And that hurts. You know, there you, you develop a certain kind of friendship. And then people leave, you know. And so it puts in my, to me at least, I don't always put myself out there because what's the, what's the point, you know. Yeah. It hurts. You know, it always does hurt when people leave. And yeah. so my friendships are borderline acquaintances these days, yeah. you know. Just trying to keep That's that a, distance a little bit. Because it's just reality. And yeah. I just... Prefer it's almost a security thing with me, you know. But I keep that that border, you know. Yeah, I understand that. It's not so Trump's that would be one of the downside downsides. You're one of the few expats I do know who have stayed in one place for a long period of time. And you're right; they tend to be transient, three to four years. Very often, they'll five years, maybe even. 
they'll yeah. tend to move on. So I get that that's a downside. And how about the upside of being there for so long? Oh, there's great upsides. I love this culture. I, I love the people. You know, I mean, it's like anywhere you go, there's positive and negative. I just find it more positive. Good. Um, yeah, I, you know, and... Uh, and how's your Spanish? I have a... Um, I love this country. <laughs> <laughs> Moving I, I, on. I, 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 know. Just, I don't know if there's something in my head that just doesn't translate well. So I developed my own brand of Spanish, which is they call Franklish. It's a little <laughs> English, a little little Spanish, a lot of Italian sign language. And I've communicated. Mm-hmm. And so and it's easy here. I gotta admit there's a problem because the problem being able to assimilate in that way because there's so much English yes. and the Costa Ricans are almost pushed to the point of having to learn English wow. to get better jobs to communicate yeah. and so it's it's easier to get by without the Spanish right. you know and so yeah. it's kind of a negative I just I have a hard time but you the know. beauty of it is is you you work with Costa Ricans, with the Turtle Reserve, and and it's wonderful because you are part of the culture, and I think that's true. But you know, I could be better at trying to communicate, and I make them communicate with me. I mean, it's interesting because I have a couple of workers who spoke no English when we began, who speak way more English than I speak Spanish, yeah. just because they needed to communicate with me. They tried harder Frank. to learn. <laughs> and I, I, I take it on myself yeah, that yeah, I, get it. I just maybe didn't take it serious enough or I was, I just don't have that part of the brain that yeah, clicks. Yeah, I don't know. You were one of my students when we worked and you did really well. So, well, I don't know about that. But that I do like the, the Franklish. Day, the <laughs> French. You did. I became the class clown. You were I, great. You were so. great. <laughs> Okay, as we wrap it up, do you have any sage advice, that little nugget that I always ask for, in terms of someone seeking to aspire to retire abroad, or even just to Costa Rica? I would suggest a couple of things. Do your research. People don't do their research. I would suggest, for especially for Costa Rica, Come stay a little bit during the high, dry season. Come stay during the wet season. Get an idea of what – there's a big difference on how you live in those two time frames. Also, you know, have a hobby. Have something that motivates you because people come here with nothing to do, and it creates problems. I've noticed it for the – 13 years I've been here, it was the most obvious thing, especially people that come in marriages or relationships, it breaks down quickly because paradise is boring. It's beautiful but boring. And if you don't find a way to occupy that time, you're going to find yourself in trouble. It's either drinking or whatever, affairs or whatever. But I... Um, as a somebody that has observed it for a long time, that's a critical thing, you know. That's so advice. So you have to come here with, with some kind of hobby or some kind of interest that you can occupy some time with, you know. That makes and I think that's sense. important. Great advice. Great advice. Thank <laughs> you. Frank, thank you so much. This has been awesome. Such oh. a pleasure. Totally my pleasure. Con mucho gusto. I like that. Yeah, I'm so impressed. Maybe I did teach you something. <laughs> you did have some influence. Thank you. Well, thanks to everyone who's joined us today because it is, as you can see, a wonderful, exciting thing to be abroad. But it's also challenging, too. So keep those things in mind, and don't forget, if you are thinking of making the move, check out the Expat Wise Guide page, because you will want to be 
savvy, and in the know, and really know what's coming at every stage of the expat journey. And also, I'm here for you for personal coaching services, and I can't wait to get to talk to you. Let's make it happen. You've got the dream. Make it right. Let's live it. Have a great day.